Good morning guys, I'm here in the mountains again and today I've got some pretty cool bike to review. It got some power and it looks pretty good but most of all it should be the best handling bike among the small ones we have here in Taiwan. Kimco Racing S150. Welcome it! This is the second generation of Kimco Racing and on the paper they look pretty much the same. However, there are a few quite a big differences. Let's check it out. The design of the bike is great. Kimco again did a pretty good job here. This thing looks pretty sporty and agile and does not look like a toy. As for me, I like the way Kimco has covered the rear wheel. It looks pretty good and it is very functional since all the space here and the engine will be always be much cleaner than the other, with the other solutions. And I also like the foot pegs right here. They do look very special. It's the first time I see that they mount on the frame that is already opened. Looks very cool, like more on a motorcycle. And I also like the LED headlights, which are right here, highlighting the headlights. They do look very beautiful and during the evenings they look gorgeous. The engine of the bike is pretty much the same as it was on previous generation of Kimco Racing. It is 4T liquid cooled, 150cc, but the power band was a bit limited because of the environmental regulations. Now it's 13.8 horses against 14 horses, which was before. The weight of the bike did not change, it is still 128 kilograms, which is pretty heavy considering that the close competitor with is Yamaha Signals Generation 4 is only 111 kilograms. Big difference here. The suspension of the bike looks pretty much the same. It's inverted fork in the front and dual rear shocks at the back. The point is Kimco really did spend some time working on the suspension because the bike does not wobble anymore no matter how hard I push it. And it also while I'm braking it does not go, the front does not go down which is really cool. What I absolutely love about this bike is its frame. It is the shortest in its class, full actually 3 cm shorter than Yamaha Cygnus and allows this bike to corner much quicker supposedly and at the same time it is very rigid and the bike does not wobble at all anymore which is fantastic because before we didn't have any Taiwanese bike that could do it. All of them wobble in corners at high speeds and this thing just eats all the corners I give it with ease and finally we have Taiwanese bike that can challenge the Japanese ones. And now let's hit the road and let me show you what this bike can do. Okay let's see what this bike has got. Oh yeah, this thing got some power here. You see what I like about the previous racing and the new racing is they feel like they're pretty much bottomless because when you start scratching the sides, it's when you actually almost low siding the bike. That gives me quite a bit of confidence and I can push the scooter as hard as I can.
I definitely love cornering on this thing. It pulls hard, I can put it low, I feel very confident. The rolling acceleration is actually much better than on the previous model. I got to compare this thing with the older generation by the end of this day. Power-wise, it's almost like force, but it's a lot more agile in the mountains, and I can put it a lot lower. But suspension-wise, it's definitely much harder. here and it's time to return the bike and I truly loved it the seat was very comfortable so actually if you take it for a long ride you will not have issues but at the same time you can really race it in the mountains the engine is not powerful enough to catch up with the bigger bikes but the handling absolutely compensates it today I could easily catch up with more sport bikes and the faster modified scooters just because how comfortable I felt putting this thing in the corners and I would not have to slow down as much. This bike puts a very good competition against both Cygnus and Force because it has quite a bit more power than Cygnus and it also handles pretty well. So if you don't want to modif modify the bike and just use it as stock and enjoy both mountains and also longer rides, this probably would be the best machine we have in Taiwan right now. Modifying this bike will be quite expensive and the engine of Kimco is, is are usually quite fragile. So I would not recommend to do that, but if you would like to, it's possible to give it quite a bit more power. Personally, I would prefer to have more power on it. So I absolutely love this bike. Would I upgrade to it from previous generation Kimco Racing? Absolutely yes, if we are talking about the stock bikes, since this one handles so much better and gives you so much more road feel. But if we're talking about modified bikes, not so much. I would keep my older generation Kimco Racing the one which I have right now. This is it for today. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Please hit me a like if you like it and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this and ride safe. Well, hello there guys again. I'm Sefli back home and there are two important things I would like to add to this video. The first thing I would like to talk about is about the race. So on the way back home I called one of my friends, the owner of previous generation Kimco Racing and asked him if he could race me because he has a stock bike. And so we can see which bike is actually faster. And amazingly when we start testing them, their performance is just like on a paper. So basically till 40 km per hour they go nose to nose because their torque is the same and delivered at the same RPM. But then the Kimco Racing S, the newer model, starts picking up because it has uh, earlier power delivery which is 13.8 horses at 7500 RPM and the older generation has to wait till 8500 RPM which is quite a big difference so the racing edge starts picking up earlier and just flies away Five, two, three. <laughs> Probably after 100 km per hour, the Kimco, all the Kimco racing would start picking up again, but 
it will be way too late. The second thing I would like to talk about is very important. Kimco Racing S can get pretty big wobbles. So the first wobble I got today was in the mountains at 80 or 90 kilometers per hour. And basically I hold the steering and it starts wobbling. And I know that the wheel there, down there is just going crazy. And somehow after a second or two seconds it stopped and I could I just continue going at high speed. Uh, and I thought it was just randomly happened because of the big bump on the road but on the way back home today just now it cut a big bump again at speeds over 80 it's probably due to the new frame adjustment that Kimco made to this bike it is very nice in turns it's very rigid but now it's catching wobbles so be careful about this one.